Hey all, long time YouTube lurker, new Patreon subscriber. Hope to get your thoughts on how Nintendo's implementation of the DLSS tensor and ray tracing hardware may factor into future handhelds like Steam Deck 2. AMD seems to be taking their own approach to NVIDIA's tech with RDNA 4. And while their upcoming APUs seem to be holding at RDNA 3.5, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on if this could be the jump in performance Valve is waiting for. And if we may see this implemented in mobile SoCs in the future. As a follow-on question, is this something that would bring benefits to handheld PCs where games may aren't made for a single piece of target hardware? Oliver. I think with the NVIDIA side of things, it's a little bit tricky because of the ARM issues that would presumably be at play here. I do think that they'll be launching a product in this segment. Apparently they are launching a product in this segment at some point over the yeah. next uh, six months or 12 months, but I'd have some concerns there possibly, but I think it could could possibly be a, a you know, there could be a possibility for a product like that to, to make inroads here. On the AMD side, like this person says, it does seem like uh, RDNA 4 is not coming to handhelds. I certainly think that could be very beneficial. But just as a general matter, like with these handhelds, they're constrained along a number of different axes. Like it's not just, like consoles where we look at console hardware and we're like, this would be really good if they had a really good machine learning based upscaler, right? On like a, say a PlayStation 5 or Series X. Here with the handhelds, we're really talking about like, like the number of CPU cores is an issue sometimes, the CPU architecture, CPU clock speed, uh, GPU size, memory bandwidth, like they're constrained along all axes. Like when I look at a Steam Deck in a demanding current generation tab like Dragon's Dogma 2, it's really like not fast enough, but in every single direction. And the upscaler right. is almost a secondary concern where it's like, well, <laughs> even if I push the upscaler as hard as I possibly can and get a horrible visual result, I can't get good enough performance. So it's like, I just feel like it's a lot of that more boring stuff that is kind of lacking across this sector of handhelds. And I'd hope that maybe, you know, an NVIDIA handheld, if, if one was to exist, an NVIDIA PC handheld, if they could really leverage, hopefully some advanced manufacturing processes and just bring big improvements everywhere. That's what I'd hope for. Not just on the side of things where NVIDIA is like really sexy right now. It's like the whole thing has to improve a lot, I feel like. Mm, yeah, I'm, I tend to agree. Alex? Yeah, just to put it in perspective in terms of like a, a GPU timeline. And uh, we saw this back when Claybook launched for Nintendo Switch, where um, Seb Altonen I made mention of the fact that they use uh, dynamic resolution scaling, which, you know, combined with TAAU at that time to get good performance on all of the, the platforms they use, except on Switch, where it didn't bring them much of anything. They could drop that res <laughs> ridiculously <Right>. low on <laughs> Switch, but it didn't really matter because the thing that was taking up so much dedicated time on the GPU was just the raw compute of doing the game's basic functions. And in this game's case, it was like particle simulations. And for other games, this could be like the, the generation of cube maps. It could be the amount of raw geometry on screen. It could, in a game that does use extensively compute shaders, a variety of different things that we're dropping the res or introducing an upscaler doesn't really have much of any positive effect, uh, even in just a purely GPU limited scenario. So you have to think about like as much as we do that on PC quite often, Oliver said, you know, that is a much larger surface <laughs> uh, for things to like spread across. And in the case of Switch to and handheld PCs, they are so much more constrained on every angle. And you have to start thinking about completely just like there's just stuff that just didn't scale at some point anymore. So you can't really do much about it. That's why I think Oliver's too big for Steam Deck videos are actually really good, even though they've gotten some strange controversy about them. <laughs> How dare you, Oliver, point out that the Steam Deck cannot play these games? Maybe. Um, but I think they're very important to give us like a real sense of like how games scale and what if someone's buying a device they want to know. So uh, I'm very curious to see what these these predecessors to these devices how they attack this this problem. Um, you mean yeah. the successors to the device? Yeah, the successors. Did I say that? Yeah. I said that wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, Oliver, too big for Steam Deck works fine on my Steam Deck. <laughs> That's always the refrain. <laughs> that magic Steam Deck. Works yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, going back to Cameron's question here. Um, hmm. Um, 
I agree with you, Oliver. I think maybe the CPU situation has been kind of resolved in that all of the non-Steam Deck handhelds out there have eight cores rather yes. than four. Um, and you were seeing some in your last Too Big for Steam Deck video, there were some dramatic differences um, mm -hmm. between Deck and, uh, and certain other um, handhelds on mm -hmm. certain games. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think AMD are fully cognizant that they need some sort of decent upscaler for their uh, for their APUs that are going into handhelds. And in actual fact, the first we heard of FSR four was like, "Hey, we've got to make our handheld performance better, and this is the way we're going to do it." But that's not what FSR four came out as, which is <laughs> no. quite interesting. Which maybe there is some sort of offshoot for RDNA three point five. I don't know. Who knows? Um, Yes, and then you've basically got the GPU um, in Steam Deck isn't really performant enough, and it kind of is in other handhelds with bigger chips, but those chips require like 30 watts being um, uh, put through them, which is not ideal really for a handheld. And yeah, the Asus ROG Ally, I mean, I love it, but you know, it's got an 80 watt hour battery and it's like um, four times as large as Switch 2. <laughs> it's kind of nuts really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and even then you're getting like, you know, two hours back for your life. Um, there's a lot going on with handhelds. And I think what's going to happen is that um, the AMD APUs, which are kind of designed primarily for laptops, they're going to continue to be used in handhelds. There's, and that's where we're going to see the, the most performance. But I think it's going to be something quite different that we'll see with Steam Deck 2 in the end. And we may have to wait a considerable time for it. Um, just the direction of travel is more towards efficiency as opposed to like throwing lots of power and horsepower at the problem.